Okay. Now I think folks can hear me. Courtney, can you hear me? Let me make sure my coworkers. Okay. Now it sounds like folks can hear me. Great. So let me start over. Um, welcome to the COVID-19 Tribal Telehealth Mini Grant, the pre-application webinar. Uh, before we get started, I just want to um, make everyone aware that this webinar is being recorded. We record and post our our webinars on our website so folks who did not weren't able to join can can do so at a later later time. Um, please keep your microphones on mute and please save your questions until the Q and A portion of the webinar, and then you'll be able to use the chat box or the phone line for questions. Feel free to chat questions as we go along. Um, I'll ask uh, my colleagues who are also panelists to help monitor that, and then we can go through those questions and the Q&A section. Uh, my name is Carrie Joseph. I'm the Deputy Director of the Public Health Policy and Programs Department at the National Indian Health Board. Also on the line, we have Robert Foley, who is the NIHB Chief Program Officer. Courtney Wheeler, who is the Public Health Program Manager, and she's also uh, part of our COVID response team. She's the main contact for that. And Marie Smith, who is the CDC Public Health Associate, who's also working with the National Indian Health Board. Um, the National Indian Health Board, um, we were established by the tribes in 1972 to advocate as the united voice of federally recognized American Indian and Alaska Native tribes. Uh, NHB seeks to reinforce tribal sovereignty, strengthen tribal health systems, secure resources, and build capacity to achieve the highest level of health and well-being for our people. This is a picture of our current board members. Um, our board um, is represented by all the 12 um, Indian health service areas through the, the area Indian health boards and where there are, where there may not be an area Indian health board by the tribes themselves. So an agenda for today, I'm gonna to talk about the background and intent of the mini grant program. I'm gonna review the request for applications, uh, talk a bit about the funding categories, uh, talk a bit about the application itself, what is required in the work plan, what is required to be uploaded. Uh, we'll look at the RFA timeline. Um, we do our funding through memorandums of agreement, a memoranda of agreement, and I'll talk a little bit of how that works. We'll have time for question and answer, and then I have a couple resources um, at the end. So just a bit about the background. Um, of this funding opportunity. So the C-19 Impact Initiative was launched by Nicholas Kristof. He is a New York Times colonist and two times Pulitzer Prize winner. Um, he started an initiative um, in response to COVID-19 and um, basically is, is a fund of, of people making dona donations. His initiative highlights five organizations who are fighting on the front lines of COVID-19. Um, and one of those organizations was, is the Johns Hopkins Center for American Indian Health. Um, in turn, the Johns Hopkins Center for American Indian Health is passing through the funding they're receiving from the C-19 Impact Initiative to three Native serving organizations, the National Indian Health Board, the National Congress of American Indians, and the National Council of Urban Indian Health. So we're really we're we're just really fortunate to be to be included and to be able to receive this funding. And we in turn are passing through 90, 95% of the funding to tribes and tribal organizations.
So the intent of the NIHB telehealth mini grant is to support tribes to enhance, alter, or develop their telehealth capacities. Um, these are non-federal funds, so there, it's a little bit probably easier for us to pass these funds through. We have more flexibility. Uh, we hope to pass on that flexibility to you. And the intent is also to address immediate needs. The funding period is short, um, and the funding period and the funding amount is not a lot. But um, so we're hoping um, tribes can use this little bit kind of shot in the arm funding to, to get a lot done. So the request for applications um, is on our website. It was also sent out an email blast. Um, the, the links here, are you probably can't click them, but this presentation will be available as well. Um, the funding amount we're looking at is up to $10,000 per award. We're looking to fund 18 awardees. Uh, the mechanism, as I said, is memorandums of agreement with funds attached. And the funding period, again, as I said, is short, approximately August 1st until December 31st. So in terms of eligibility, applicants must be an official tribal entity defined as a federally recognized tribal government, tribal organization, or intertribal consortium as defined in the Indian Self-Determination and Education Assistance Act as amended. Um, not eligible, and I, and I included this as I have gotten some questions, um, urban Indian health organizations, um, non-tribal organizations, um, but the non-eligible entities are encouraged to partner with an eligible tribal entity. Um, as we know, you all may work together anyhow, but the tribe would be the applicant and recipient of the funds. Um, applicants may, we have some other funding opportunities currently going on or, or coming up. Applicants uh, may be currently in receipt of or are welcome to apply for other NIHB funding opportunities. So just looking at the uh, RFA, we have five funding categories. Um, you can choose, there's no benefit to applying for more than one category, so please choose the best fit for your needs or choose two or three or four or five, however many fits your needs. Um, it's just a way to, 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 to organize. So the five categories, one is materials and equipment acquisition. We'll fund facilities and infrastructure. We'll fund outreach and education. We'll fund training and technical assistance and evaluation and assessment. Again, all related to telehealth. So I'm gonna go just over each category a little bit. Um, in the RSA, you'll see some sample activities. Basically, these are the, the same ones. So under materials and equipment acquisition, some sample activities may be upgrading or purchasing hardware to increase bandwidth, maybe upgrading or purchasing hardware to increase signal strength and connectivity, um, or activities uh, like purchasing smartphones and our tablets for community members. In the category of facilities and infrastructure, some activities may be purchasing and installing hotspots through a reservation or a community or a village, maybe turning rooms within facilities into telehealth appointment rooms, uh, maybe updating EHRs to better track telehealth services and link them to the on-site in-person staff, maybe developing or purchasing software or an app for the clinic or hospital to support telehealth, um, for example, to serve as a patient portal. And then it also could be ensuring that billing systems are ready to support telehealth engagement. In the category, category outreach and education, a sample activity may be marketing of telehealth services, um, maybe if you have to purchase, you know, airtime um, and things like that, or create materials, um, can certainly support that. Um, in the category of training and technical assistance, this could be training for community members on how to use existing or new technologies, could be training providers and or support staff on how to use telehealth systems. And then for evaluation and assessment, it could be conducting a community level assessment, you know, maybe assessing needs, 
for telehealth, um, assessing uptake, um, and uh, perhaps evaluation of telehealth services. So basically this is, we really wanna fund what, what you all need. Um, so you're not limited to these activities. These are just samples. If the activity you know, fits within the category, um, again, we want to be flexible and to um, to serve, you know, to be able for for you to use this funding how you need it, um, how you need it the most. Okay, one second here. Okay. And then just again, the RFA on page three, completed applications. There's a couple of different parts. One is just the application. Um, we prefer that folks do this online. Use the link to the online. It is a survey monkey. Um, and then also you will need to complete a work plan. We provide a template for that. That is also on our website. Um, and if, when you go into the Survey Monkey, there's a link to click and, and get the work plan downloaded there. That's a Word document. Um, you will be able to complete that. I'll go into a little more detail on that. We're also asking for an upload of the most recent audit letter to um, the tribal government or schedule of findings. Um, usually, I think that's the, the first page or so of an audit. And the sign, a signed letter of support from a tribal official. And I'll talk a little bit more about about all these little pieces. So the application form in, a, in and of itself, there's, um, if you click on the link within the RFA, it takes you to SurveyMonkey. Um, it's not very, it's not super long. I think there's a total of 14 or 15 questions. Um, we ask contact information and there's kind of, could be three different people. Um, so one contact information for who should receive the notification of the application decision. Sometimes it's the, you know, the whoever's uh, the grant folks are. It just depends on who gets that notification. Um, and then also we'll want contact information of who the project coordinator is going to be. So who's going to be managing the day-to-day -day work? Who's going to be, you know, basically. Um, maybe spending the money and, and doing things like that, keeping track of things. Um, and then the last bit of information we need, and these could all be different, you know, names and addresses, is who is the payee and where to send the check. So if we're gonna fill out a check, pay to the order of and where to send it. This does not mean that everyone who puts an application is getting funded, we're limiting to, to 18. Um, but if we can get this information up front, it just makes things easier in the long run. So this is based on um, should you get funded, who would, who would be the payee and where to send the check. We also ask for demographic information for the tribe, you know, number of um, enrolled members, you know, how, what's the population you serve, what is, if you have a reservation, how, how many acres is that, just some basic demographics. Also, we want to ask uh, the number of individuals who will be impacted by the funding and basically a little bit about who they are, just some descriptive, you know, this will be elders, this might be youth, uh, and it could be our providers and all our providers who work with our population. Um, it just depends on what your activities are and your objectives and who that's going to impact. And we have two, I asked for two project narrative questions. So these questions, again, not very long, about 250 words for each one. The first one is kind of a two-part question, but uh, it says, describe the tribe's current experience with and need for telehealth services. So um, tell, just talk a little bit about what you're currently doing with telehealth, um, and then what are maybe the gaps, the challenges, and what do you need for telehealth? Um, and that, that could be big and broad. Um, and then the next question is the project description. So how will the funds, how will these funds fit in to your, to your need for telehealth services?
All right, there's also a budget section in the application form. Um, and obviously the requested amount should reflect um, the level of effort required to, to do the activities in the scope of work, or in other words, the work plan. Um, so funding may be used for wages, equipment, supplies, training, advertising, marketing, facilities, improvements, education. You can fund consultants. This isn't federal money, so food is allowable expense. Um, funding may not be used for indirect costs or lobbying. Okay, so this is what the budget basically looks like. We just put a little template in there um, to wages, salaries, you can put the fringe contractual costs, that would be consultants, supplies, equipment, training, uh, other direct costs, and then you'd have to enter the total. In the online survey monkey form, you can only enter whole numbers. Um, don't add, enter any commas, decimal points, dollar signs, or any other characters, or it, you'll go through this whole thing and then it'll say, oh, you did that wrong. So do, <laughs> up front, so um, it doesn't catch it until you sort of fill out the whole, the whole chart. So that's the tip. Okay, so there's three uploads in the application. So there's the questions you fill out directly into the application form, and then there's three spots um, all in a row where you have to upload. So one is the work plan. You're going to upload the letter of support from the tribal official. That'll be a PDF. And then another PDF, the documentation of the most recent financial audit. So the work plan, um, and this is just a snapshot of, of what the template looks like. So there's a, a little table for each category. This one's facilities and infrastructure. And again, I've just listed the sample activities. Uh, basically, you, you uh, click and enter objective, outcomes, activities, deadlines, and outputs. Um, only fill out the tables for the categories you choose. Just leave the rest blank. Um, the objectives should be written as SMART objectives, so specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound. Um, you've probably, if you've filled out grant applications before, you've probably written SMART objectives. And then um, the expected outcome. So what do you expect to achieve by the objective? Like what will be gained? Who will be impacted and how? So for example, um, if your objective is you know, your objective may be to um, install hot, 10 hotspots on, you know, tribal lands, and the expected outcome may be, you know, elders will have increased access to telehealth services. Um, and then activities, again, this isn't a huge amounts of funding, so, but I would be, you know, as detailed as, as you need to be for what it's going to take to do to reach your objective. There's spots for one activity per row. I think most uh, each of the categories has like three lines for activities. If you need more, just add more. If you need less, don't, you know, you don't need to add anything. And the deadline should be before December 31st. We're recommending have your activities done by about December 18th before holidays, um, and then also time to do a final report. And then the outputs are basically the number and description of tangible products as a result of an activity. So uh, 10 hotspots. The activity may be purchase hotspots, and the outputs just, we have 10, bought 10 of those. So please, don't overthink it, don't overcomplicate it, but have enough detail to be clear about what you're intending to do and what the impact is going to be. Um, this is everything I just said, so I'm not gonna go over this one. The letter of support from the tribal official. Um, this should be an official letterhead and it should be from the tribal health department director or CEO, the chair of the tribal health committee, tribal chairperson or any other tribal official that oversees all or a portion of the public health activities. And documentation of the most recent financial audit. 
to be a copy of the most oh, I'm sorry, the most recent audit letter to your governance or the schedule of findings. And that will be a separate PDF. If you have trouble with the application form in SurveyMonkey, con please contact Marie Smith at msmith at nihb.org. Um, she can help with the, the SurveyMonkey. She can help if you're having trouble uploading documents. And uh, we, we also do have an option to complete the application in a Word document and submit it by email. Uh, we prefer you would do it online through SurveyMonkey, but uh, we realize that not everyone um, has, you know, sometimes things just don't work out as planned um, or can access things all the time in some people system. So please contact Marie if you need any assistance with that. So just a quick bit about the memorandum of agreement because um, even, again, this will only be for tribes, uh, applicants that are funded, but it's important to know upfront what you're getting into. So the memorandum of agreement just sort of outlines who's going to do what. And so basically the scope of work as in a contract is our the agreed upon work plan. Um, and we will furnish the MOA after the funding decisions are made. Basically, in the MOA, uh, some of the highlights are that awardees will um, also permit NHB to share project success, lessons learned, and other tangible products as part of a broader information dissemination strategy. We don't share without getting permission, um, but oftentimes many of our awardees create these incredible products that can be useful or other folks ask for them had a problem with people not wanting to share, but just wanted to, to put that put that in there. Um, also, awardees will participate in project evaluation activities for this project. It may be a, a short phone call or a questionnaire. Um, awardees will submit a final report and financial statement to NIHC by December 31st. Um, a pretty standard uh, grant activity. Um, we NIHB in the MOA it, 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 uh, outline, it will outline specified amount of funds and when they will be dispersed. Um, we are looking at um, dispersing those funds up front. And then also we will provide technical assistance from NIHB as requested. Okay, I'm going to um, go through this quickly so we can get to the Q and A. So right now we're in the pre-application webinar. Applications are due on July 21st. July 29th, we'll have award notifications and those will be sent by email. Um, sometimes the MOA, we'd like to get that as soon as possible. We have to have that in order to disperse funds, but um, sometimes it takes a little while to get things signed. I'm sure you all can relate to that. Um, so I just put a month in there, although we'll do that as soon as possible. And then December 18th is the suggested deadline for completing your activities, and December 31st is the end of the funding cycle, and the final report is due. Okay, so let's move on to Q&A. Um, you can chat your questions directly in the chat box, um, or you can chat like, hey, I would like to ask a question, and we will unmute you. Um, and shortly hereafter, I will open up the phone line so those who are on phone only will be able to ask a question if they're not able to see the chat. Um, so I am looking let's see. I'm looking through first of all, here's the first question I see. Um, will you allow pre award costs, expenses incurred prior to August first? I'm going to ask on Robert to answer that question. Robert, are you unmuted? I am unmuted. And I would say write it into your application. Um, because this is not federal funding, we do have a little bit more freedom. And um, so I'm not going to say yes and I'm not going to say no. It really is going to depend on what the actual cost is. But I will say if, it, if it's completely related to telehealth, um, and you have the proper documentation to support a reimbursement, then um, we're certainly not opposed to it. I will say that um, there does definitely need to 
the documentation of when the expense occurred and that it was related to the intent to upgrade telehealth or enhance telehealth services to address the COVID pandemic locally. Thank you, Robert. Mm -hmm. um, the next question I'm seeing is, um, and this is related to the letter of support, so a tribal council resolution will work, signed by our chairman. Um, yes, that, that is definitely will serve as uh, the letter of support. And let's see. Next question from Charles Peel. For tribal organizations who have not met the federal threshold to require an audit, how can we document that audit piece for the grant requirement? Robert, I'm going to have to call on you on that one as well. Okay, so if you are not required to have an audit, um, then simply provide us a letter that states as much and why you're not required to have an audit. And I would say, if we have any further questions, we'll contact you directly. Okay. Um, so let's see, from Jandy Craig, we have had to beef up our infrastructure following the pandemic. Can we use the funds for these unanticipated costs? I, I would say, it, I, I'm kind of saying it depends is it tele, if it's telehealth related and Jandy, maybe I will try to unmute you so we can Hear a little more. Let's see if I can find it in the list here. I'm having a hard time pulling up the list. Robert, do you have any insight on that? I agree with you, Carrie, that it probably would depend. And really, if it's expenses around telehealth infrastructure, and we acknowledge that those expenses and the nature of those expenses can vary, then we would, we would entertain um, providing funding to support those expenses. But uh, if it's something else outside of that realm um, that the tribe is dealing with or addressing, then unfortunately this funding opportunity announcement cannot be used to support that. So things such as food for family members, you know, or food distribution program, that would not be allowable. However, if you're providing food during a training to train community members and elders how to use, you know, telehealth programming and, you know, patient portals, things of that nature, and that would be allowable. Okay, and um, Jandy, I wasn't able to find you in the list. It's for some reason it's not showing my entire list, but if you want to email, have some specific questions, please feel free to do that. Um, now I see another question from Charlotte Moore. Do you have to be on tribal land to get hotspots? Our community health center is not on tribal land. Um, I would say no, um, as long as it's serving, you know, your population. And Carrie, I would add to that, this is Robert, as long as the community health center is, is of course, a tribal health facility. You know, we have several CHCs that serve tribes that are not tribally owned or operated, or IHS owned and operated, either. either. Okay, uh, is a tribal resolution required? No, if that, it's not required by us. Um, and we know that some tribes have that as a requirement for applying for any funding, but it's not required by NIC. All right, and then I'm also seeing, let me pull up the Q&A because for some reason WebEx has both a chat and a Q&A. Um, so I'm getting questions in both. If one small tribe gets the grant, yet has about five small tribes in the area, but not a consortium, is it allowable to do the needs assessment, the equipment training, et cetera, with all tribal citizens in the area or only the grantee citizens? 
I would say if, again, describe your need. Um, and if you serve tri other tribes in your system, I would, I would say that is fine. But again, just be descriptive in your need and how it's going to reach folks. Um, we're not restricting to, you know, if you serve, you know, other tribes, I think that's, that's basically who you serve, so that's fine. Would letters of support be needed for all the tribes or only the grantee? Just the grantee. Okay, let's see. Um, so here's a question related to they have a large population and they're building their telehealth capacity, but their greatest need is to equip a small group of pediatric weight loss clinic patients um, with telehealth equipment such as scales, blood pressure cuffs, et cetera. Do numbers serve effect scoring? Um, no. Um, we're just trying to get an idea of what the reach is going to be. Um, but the, if that's your biggest need, then please describe that and try to fill that. Financial audit upload, actual audit, or letter of findings, if any, the letter of findings is fine. Regarding the audit submission, do you want a single audit or a tribal audit? Uh, Robert, I'm not sure I know what the difference is. Yeah, sometimes they do single program audits or, um, or a tribal audit. Oh, okay. Actually, either for our purposes um, is appropriate. And we know that especially with, you know, larger tribes, um, you may not even be able to get a hold of a tribal audit. That may be possible with smaller tribes. So we would actually accept either. Thank you. Um, is there a way to obtain a paper copy of the RFP? I've tried to print the Survey Monkey app, but was not successful. Yes, please contact Marie Smith, msmith at nihb.org, and she can send you that. And yes, the Tribal Council resolutions are fine for the letter of support. I would let's see. I have a question about print. What was entered into Survey Monkey? Um, I believe I put the setting on there so when you fill it out, it sends you your answers. But uh, again, uh, contact Marie Smith if you're not able to get that printed. Well, she can help you with that. And it looks like some folks are saying there's some issue on the website with the opening of the some of the documents so we're checking into that they were opening earlier today sometimes when they do updates to the website there's a little bit of lag so I would say refresh the page and and try again it took me about five minutes this morning when I uh, for the refresh to, to take effect uh, yes we will post the PowerPoint of the presentation uh, for today's webinar on the, the funding site where we have the RFA and the, the worksheet template. Hope to do that. Uh, we should be able to do that hopefully within 24 hours. Um, if a tribe does not have a health department at all, but there are IHS facilities in the proposed service area, a tribe can work with, I, with IHS for the activities. Yes. The tribe would be the applicant and recipient um, who, you, who the tribe partners with to fulfill those telehealth needs. Um, that would be up to them. Uh, is a letter from the CEO appropriate to meet the tribal support letter, um, tribally authorized, but don't have a tribal council to get a letter from, then yes. Can application be project from a department other than our health services department, but that addresses telehealth needs? Um, absolutely. No restrictions there. What information should be included in the tribe's current experience with telehealth services and the need for telehealth services? Um, again, it's, it's be brief, um, 250 words. So if you have already 
if you are already offering telehealth services, just maybe a bit about, you know, I guess that they're related. So it maybe it's like we reach, we only reach 50% of the population or, um, you know, we, we provide behavioral health services. We provide, um, you know, other types of health checkups, you know, maybe a little bit about what kinds of services you provide and what services you need, um, how you're hoping to enhance your capacity um, and what is needed. If the tribal health clinic serves both tribal citizens and their families as well as employees who are non-native, are we allowed to include non-native as participants? Um, I think it's fine to, uh, in the in the part where it says, you know, how many people will be served and who will be served. Obviously, um, a, a project that only served non-members um, would not be appropriate, but if they are included, then um, just be descriptive. It's not like who's allowed and who's not allowed, but just be descriptive. Okay, I'm going to go back to the chat. See if there's any more questions here. Um, who should the letter of support be addressed to? Um, that is fine. You can address that uh, to. You can address that to Stacy A. Bolin, who's our CEO. Okay. A uh, physician at IHS facility interested in working on setting up a telehealth room in one of our chapter houses, would we have to find an organization to pair with and have them submit the application? Yes, find a tribal organization to, to pair with on that. Is telehealth for alcohol and substance abuse counseling sessions allowable? Um, yes, they are. Could we get intraoral cameras for use in teledental? Um, if that is your need, then that would fit under, totally fits under telehealth. Telehealth is a broad category. Um, it's not restricted to, um, you know, what normally happens in the healthcare facility. It can include the behavioral health um, and things like that. And the, you know, I think diabetes and things like that. So, yes. Is there a word limit for the two narratives? Um, it's actually a character count. It's 1,500 characters. I tried to estimate how many words that is, and I think it's about 200, 250. Again, they're short, um, so just be brief and to the point. Okay, um, that's all I'm seeing in the chat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to unmute everyone if I can. Maybe Courtney, you can help me on this. Um, if you can, for some reason I'm not able to, I'm only seeing a portion of the participants. It's only showing maybe about half. I'm not sure I can unmute everyone. Let's see here. Hi, Carrie, I can see everyone, but it won't let me unmute them. Hmm. I can't see everyone. I can only see about 20 people. And I click view all attendees and nothing happens. So let me, let me try this. Courtney, I might try. Well, I'm not able to. Unmute everyone. So I apologize for that. If you're on telephone only and you have a question, please email me at K Joseph. That's K J O S E T H at N I H B dot org. And I will answer your questions that way. Um, and it'll, it will be after the webinar. So with that, I just uh, want to sh see here.
just a few resources. Um, again, this will be more clickable, more meaningful once we post this. These are uh, links to NIHB funding opportunities. We have other funding opportunities available, not necessarily telehealth related or COVID related, but just some other ones. I think we have a tobacco um, funding opportunity and a dental health therapy opportunity open now. Um, we also have links to COVID funding opportunities across uh, other federal agencies. Um, this is a list we've been trying to keep since um, the, the pandemic started. Um, also put a link to the IHS Telehealth and mHealth Listserv. Um, we've seen that is, uh, folks are using that quite a bit right now. And then a link to telehealth.hhs.gov has some really good resources there. Um, additional questions, again, anything about the RFA, the funding categories, you can contact me by phone or by email. Uh, Marie Smith, again, anything having to do with the actual application, the survey monkey, uploading documents, needing a, a Word document copy, please contact Marie. And Courtney Wheeler, all things uh, COVID response for the National Indian Health Board, you can contact C. Wheeler at NAHB.org. Um, I thank you all for attending. If I did not get to your, your question, um, I'll be looking in the, the chat box. Um, please send those to me to my email. Again, kjoseph at nihb.org. I'll stay on for a few more minutes. Um, if, uh, but basically we're, we're adjourning. So thank you all. Linda Santi, are you still on the line? I unmuted you.